What are the most exciting application of uh, AI and ML in defense today? Video interpretations, surveillance areas, maybe get AI on the drones and have them work. Maybe have some autonomous uh, vehicles which can actually go and make an impact in the battlefield. So how do you see the role of AI evolving in the uh, Indian Air Force over the next decade? <laughs> I'm here on a personal capacity, so whatever I'll say or I'll, ex I'll try to justify is on a personal capacity, not on behalf of any organization or Indian Air Force per se. Hello everyone, today we have Wing Commander Rohan Chandak sir with us who have worked in AI in Indian Air Force. Hello sir. Hello, good afternoon. Could you introduce yourself and tell us about your role and where you have worked recently? So basically I'm from the Indian Air Force. Okay. I worked for the Indian Air Force uh, for a period of 14 years before finally hanging my uniform. And I worked in various fields, uh, right from uh, the radar operations, maintain of, maintenance of the radar operations, to developing uh, some softwares and algorithms for the cutting edge technology that go actually on board into the uh, aviation platforms. How did you find the uh, experience of leading the master class uh, in our college? Uh, well, it was fantastic. And uh, just by looking at the students and uh, the enthusiasm that they had during the class, and then how they actually connected the dots when I started explaining them what, what is to be done and what not. So uh, they were just not about uh, building uh, or creating things. They were actually thinking of how to make it at a grand scale, how to actually productionize all these uh, solutions that they want to build. So it was really fascinating for me to uh, engage with them and interact with them. Uh, I come to know that uh, you are currently a student uh, pursuing management studies at uh, IM. So yes. what was your thought, like working in a profession, then going back to the classroom? Like what was your yeah. back of the mind? So uh, again, coming into the IIM and studying in IIM is a dream come true sort of a thing yeah. for any of the students in India. Uh, saying that uh, I got this opportunity because of uh, defense, uh, they give us the opportunity to pursue uh, the management studies at any of the IIMs. So uh, I got an opportunity to uh, avail the studies at IIM Mumbai. And uh, I think that the classroom is a really good equalizer. So no matter where you come from and uh, whatever your expertise and your experience is, everybody is there to learn. So coming over here, uh, I was previously like building on the technology. Coming into the IIM, I am learning about how to commercialize that technology. Uh, your work on productive health monitoring of jet engines is uh, with the help of uh, AI and ML is really fascinating. Could you walk us through the project and its impact? So, uh, actually I'll say it's not my work per se, it's the work of the Indian Air Force and the officers who are involved in this. Okay. I just happened to be lucky enough to get involved in that project and be a part of that project. And uh, I had some amazing seniors and mentors who guided me all throughout the journey. And then finally we could roll this project out. Uh, it's mostly for predicting the life of the jet engines, uh, doing some proactive maintenance activities mainly to reduce the downtime of the engines, if I put it in a nutshell over there. According to you, what are the most exciting apps, uh, application of uh, AI and ML in defense today? So, uh, the defense sector is actually uh, uh, exploring a lot of uh, computer vision problems. Uh, we have a lot of uh, speech uh, challenges, like uh, we can uh, uh, build something from a speech to text, the uh, interpretation of various languages, uh, because there are some languages, peculiar languages that need to be concentrated on. Uh, so there are, these challenges are very, very important in terms of the defense when it comes to the surveillance, when it comes to tracking, targeting. Uh, in fact, cyber is also one of the very core areas wherein uh, the defense is really concentrating on. Uh, the cyber defense, the cyber offense activities. Uh, so there's a lot of scope for uh, students who want to enter into the defense uh, area per se and engage in building cutting edge and innovative solutions. For students aiming to enter in the AI field, especially within the uh, defense area, so what skills or knowledge should they prioritize? So uh, I will say just prioritize on the basics first. Okay. Uh, don't get overwhelmed by the GPTs and the LLMs that you have in front of you. If you build your foundations and the basics, uh, gradually things will follow and you will be able to develop beautiful applications. So there are some areas like, uh, like, like I said, image recognition, yes. the video interpretations, uh, surveillance areas, uh, maybe get AI on the drones 
and have them work. Maybe have some auto autonomous uh, vehicles which can actually go and make an impact in the battlefield. Uh, like I said, uh, you can have the open forum, uh, visibility to the open forums wherein there are a lot of challenges that are being published by the Indian government and the Indian defense sector per se. So these challenges give you an, give you an insight of what the actually industry wants, what the defense wants. It would be very helpful if you just explore these challenges and uh, uh, take, take some clues uh, from there so as to what applications you really need to develop which can really make an impact for the nation and defense as a whole. So maybe just get updated yourself with the current global defense trends also. Uh, that is also very helpful. There are some channels like they have to follow like Twitter accounts or some? Or uh, like yes, so there are some Twitter accounts. Uh, if you go into the forums of uh, Indian Army or Indian Air Force or for that matter the defense agencies, you will get some open challenges as well, uh, which highlight the needs of uh, the defense sector per se. Uh, there are competitions also being uh, arranged and organized by the Indian defense sector. Some of them being like IDEX being one of them. So you can have a visibility on, uh, the, on the challenges. They publish the challenges uh, very frequently. And all these challenges are not only just concentrated on AI and ML, they are on building solutions and technologies. Uh, as you have a great experience, so how do you see the role of AI evolving in the uh, Indian Air Force over the next decade? Well, I'm too small to comment for the Air Force actually. <laughs> but uh, as I see, like it's my very personal opinion, uh, I see a lot of edge AI devices coming into play in the next decade or so. Uh, because uh, although we have very good capable machines of fighting the battles, but uh, we need that edge compute uh, on these battle machines, which will make the people who are operating these machines, uh, I'll say more wiser and more aware of the surroundings. Okay. Uh, how can institutions like our NSG prepare students to meet the growing demand for AI and ML expertise in national security and defenses? Okay, so uh, one, st one standard solution you can adopt is maybe uh, open labs, which can actually help you simulate the environment or maybe have uh, uh, some sort of a, uh, if, I, if I see it from the Air Force point of view, then maybe have some sort of a aerodynamics or a, a aero modeling lab, wherein you can experiment with a lot of uh, aviation uh, challenges. Uh, maybe have some uh, complex solutions uh, simulated in, in the form of uh, digital twins, uh, wherein you can experiment and also realize the potential of your solutions. So like, uh, what is the piece of advice uh, you would like to give to our students? They're, like, they should be a standout and excel in, their, excel in the defense field and like uh, using AI and ML. So start from basics and uh, don't, don't boat, try to boat too many ships at one time. Okay, one at otherwise, a time. Yeah, otherwise you'll realize the ship you've boarded is finally, finally turned into a Titanic <laughs> and you'll go in, in the sinking waters. So just build one step at a time. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities to explore. AI is still still evolving. And although people say that uh, there is some part of AI which is exhausted and there's some part of AI which is low, like going right now. But uh, I feel that there's opportunity in all the sectors of uh, AI and data science per se that we can still explore. There are a lot of unexplored areas, even in the areas where people say that this is like saturated. Reached, uh, saturated. So it's not like that. So go one step at a time and and for a student, the best part is you have the luxury of asking all the questions, all your doubts. So clear your doubts when you are still studying. So, sir, we have some general question. Like, uh, uh, we were very excited to have you. So, like, uh, we, uh, our group has a discussion over a startup. So, there is a startup in Bangalore called uh, Saral Aviation. So, he is a German guy. Uh, with the, uh, in his team, he has two Indian guys. So, they have uh, uh, raised a funding of like uh, something crore. Uh, so, they are making. Uh, uh, electric flying taxis, which are cheaper than our uh, SUV Ola. Like Ola yes. is charging uh, 2000 approx and they are charging around uh, 1600 or 1700. So like my, uh, the main two questions were, why are like flying, we are going by flying and we are paying so less as compared to like uh, on road. And the second is uh, like, uh, is, is there any, it is feasible, like uh, we can see this in India in the next 10 year or it is very far or it is very near. So it's a trial model, first of all. Okay. Uh, we will exp we will get to realize the scales as and when we get the figures okay. of whether it is sustainable or not, 
definitely it is solving some problem it's solving the problem of people uh, going from one end of the bangalore to the other end taking maybe two two and a half hours yeah. and then actually paying more than what the taxi they are paying for the taxis uh, so it is solving some problem but then uh, to look at the business side of it whether it is sustainable or not only time will tell okay uh, like it has two uh, two sides one technical and one business yes, side yes yes so technically it is feasible although there were a lot of uh, as i assume and presume there would have been a lot of constraints in terms of uh, how to manage their space uh, how to regulate these taxis uh, maybe control their uh, aerial heights and so that they uh, they don't uh, actually enter into the uh, uh, domain of uh, the take off and landing basically the zone of take off and landing and simultaneously coordinate their uh, their movements in and around the airport and then uh, take those passengers from because it would be a helipad in yes. which they would be finally landing it so take the passengers from there to the terminals get the check in dance i'm very sure that it would have been a very complex problem uh, even we saw during a time of uh, uh, the aviation reform that happened they made the flight tickets very affordable very affordable so affordability is one factor but how much sustainable it is uh, we'll have to just wait and watch for that okay thank you sir for your time thank and you